Okay, so fractions can be really tedious to teach and for students to practice. And boy, do they need practice on fractions. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my three favorite games for fraction practice. These can be used with all sorts of fraction concepts. I'm actually going to give you a resource. So once you're done watching this, check out the link in the description because I'm going to link to a free resource that includes all of these games that I show. So you can pick and choose the activity that works best with your students, or you can, um, also check out the link in the description if you're looking for more fraction concepts because we have all the fraction concepts in our Math Center's resource. The first fraction game is very simple. It's just a board game, but it's a simplified board game because the more complicated the board game, the longer it's going to take. So we wanna really focus on the fraction concepts and not necessarily this really complicated long game that's gonna take your entire one hour math block. Um, so this game is very simple. What it does is it has cards that go with it. The students actually spin. There's only one or two on the spinner because it's a short game board, but once they spin, if they solve the problem correctly, they get to move ahead. Very simple. Um, this actually uses a paper clip, so there's no fancy supplies needed. The only fun fancy supplies I use, which are not required, because um, you can use just regular math counters, but I got these really cool little game pieces on Amazon. It came with like 50 of them for $8 or something. So I'll link to this in the description below as well. And it just makes it a little more fun for students. But again, you could use math counters too. Now with this game, there's really no pressure. If a student doesn't understand how to do it, they could definitely ask for help or they can work with whoever they're playing with to solve it and still move forward. So we don't really want a situation where there is a child who can't get these problems right, just never having success with the board game. Um, so there is a lot of scaffolding built in. There is an opportunity for the student to get help. And I do also make sure that the students can tackle this skill before they're actually doing this game. Okay, my next fraction game is a secret picture game that uses tiles that students will match up with the game board in order to make a secret picture. So this, I highly recommend actually laminating these. Um, you can laminate the cards in the game we talked about last as well, but you wanna reuse these things as much as possible. But the cool thing about this is you can laminate it, cut it out and mix it up into a bag and students can reuse this game over and over again. So we have these for a variety of skills because it's super easy, you just take a picture you scramble the picture and you put the answer on it and then um, have the board. In this case, it's pretty simple because um, it's a mixed number that's um, matching the improper fraction, so super easy. What I really love about these secret picture games is that I can laminate them, I can keep them in a box, buy the skill, and I can just grab them and go for students that need a little extra practice. And that way I can easily differentiate for students, whether it's during centers or doing during our regular practice time and not have to have make any other additional copies or have any really extra effort. I just kind of grab and go. Okay, my last game is super simple because it involves something you probably have sitting around your classroom and that is a set of task cards. So you could use flashcards or you could use task cards that you purchase online or got for free. Um, again, link in the description for these. But the cool thing about task cards is that you can use it and make a lot of games for your students. So one of my favorite games with task cards is to take every single task card which is labeled with a number and have that task card paste or hid, paste it or hidden somewhere around the room. Um, and when we do this, they can take their clipboards with their um, answer recording sheet and they have to find every single one and they have to record the answers. To make it extra fun, what I do is I, um, I take a couple of them and put them in difficult hiding places. And that way most of them are pretty easy to find, but there's really a couple that they have to search for. And that makes it extra fun because it's not just like, hey, we're posting them in order around the room, which can get kind of tedious towards, you know, number 18 or 19. 
In addition to the recording sheet, your students are going to need to have something to write on like a notebook or a clipboard and some extra paper because they're definitely going to need that for these. So you could use this for any fraction concept. It doesn't have to be adding. Um, it doesn't have to be adding with mixed numbers either. Um, so you can definitely shake this up. You can also use these task cards for a partner game. So you can put this in the middle of the desk and have students say go and each one will secretly work on a whiteboard and then when they're done, they will show it to each other at the same time to see if their answers match. So super simple way to do a partner game with the task cards. And again, you can use any task card for that. Okay, so let's talk about implementing this. So where can you use these games? When can you use them? When should you bring them out? So I highly recommend you use this, these games after you've taught the skill and students have had a little bit of practice time with the skill. They should definitely have notes on the skill as well so that they could take those two work on the game so that they have some extra assistance. But I primarily use these during centers or sometimes I'll use them for early finishers. So if you're using these for centers, what I recommend is that you prep a variety of centers and have them in some sort of container or some sort of organization that makes it easy to just grab and go because centers can be very overwhelming if you don't have things prepared, especially if you have students who have lots of different needs. The cool thing about our math centers is that we have them for three different grade levels. So if you decide that you want to grab those, make sure you check the description below, but you can actually get all three grade levels. And if you have a student who's a little bit behind the skill you're working on in fifth grade, you can kind of move backwards to fourth grade. So I like to have as many levels as possible in my centers because I think that my students obviously aren't all at grade level and some of them are missing some key skills. So it's not just for fractions. Sometimes we do this for multiplication, division, just all sorts of mathematical concepts where I have centers that are a variety of, of grade levels. Now, if you have fast or early finishers and the students have actually done what they're working on correctly, you may want to have some centers or some of these games that further work on that skill so they can get extra practice. Or for those students who are above grade level, you can have above grade level skills that they're ready to tackle as a game, as long as it's something that's next on the progression level and is easy enough for them to work their way through. So what's nice about these games and using them as centers or for early finishers is that students can really easily get extra practice in whatever skill they need at their level and it's all pretty much done and ready to go. Okay, so last thing you need to do is you need to go to the link in the description, grab this free resource so you can get the three games that I love for fractions. And again, if you need additional skills, I'll also link to our math centers bundles so that you can see all of the math skills in actual fraction centers, multiplication centers. Um, it's really one of the best resources that you can have for your classroom because you can have everything prepped, laminated and ready to go and you can use it year after year. If you have a favorite fraction game and I haven't covered it, please leave it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, I'm here to help. Uh, leave your question in the comment below. I will come back and answer it. And I hope you enjoy your free resource. I think this is a really fun one. Um, definitely one of our favorites in our class.